So in the first installment of the series, we started taking our first steps towards creating a Wordle game in Scratch. We've gotten past Scratch's wonky text input system and created a system where a press on any key on the keyboard will flip over a tile revealing that letter on the screen. What we're going to do today is propagate that across five different letters so that we can spell out entire words in Wordle. So we're just going to have to take the existing text input system and find a way to get it to flip from one letter to the next. Let's get right to it. So we're back inside our game file. You can find the location of that in the description below and call it up at any time if you want to see all the coding we've completed so far in our tutorials. So as you can see, I've added the rest of the letter of the alphabet. I only had A through D in the first section here. And it's quite nicely taking the input uh, from my keyboard and translating into letter tiles here. So the challenge today is going to be to use cloning to make five duplicates of this tile and then have them take turns one at a time accepting input from the keyboard. I know right away that one of the things I'm going to have to be careful about here is accidental keyboard inputs. I'm going to want to uh, make sure that when I hit a letter A, for example, that I don't end up accidentally entering two A's into the keyboard. So that's something we're going to have to be aware of as we code here. So I've repositioned that first tile over on the top left of the screen at coordinates minus 195, 135. After some experimentation, that seemed like a good place to plunk it. And so that's where we're gonna create our first clone. First though, we, we don't want this master tile that we're using for clone making to be visible. So let's go ahead and hide it with a hide command. And we're gonna wanna make sure it's switched to a blank costume before we start plunking these down the screen. So let's switch the costume to default. Okay, now we're gonna have to be able to address each of these individual squares as its own object. And the way that we do that is by stamping it. When we create the clone, we're gonna stamp it with a clone ID. And that's just basically a, a unique number that every single one of these squares is gonna have. So that we wanna talk to it to tell it to change. We'll not be changing all the clones, we'll be doing just the one that we're interested in. So uh, that's a local variable. So meaning when I create that variable, it has to say for this sprite only. And that way, each of the clones can have its own version of that variable rather than it being a variable that changes no matter what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and I've created that variable already. So it's called square ID. So I'm gonna set that square ID to zero. And I'm gonna start by making five squares. We're gonna add a couple more rows um, and we'll do that probably in our next part of the tutorial. But for now, let's go ahead and use a repeat loop and we'll repeat five times. And inside there, as soon as we get started, we're gonna change that variable by one. So let's go ahead and change square ID by one so that the first one would be stamped with the number one, et cetera, et cetera. And now we'll go ahead and create a clone of myself. So let's go ahead and select create clone of myself. And I've done some playing around with the spacing and I've determined that moving by 57 pixels here to the right will create a nice looking row. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. We'll click the green flag and nothing happens. The reason for that, of course, is because we've hidden the object and it's made invisible clones of itself. An invisible object, when you clone it, will of course be invisible on the other side. So we need a, a when I started the clone here, which we can find under the bottom of the control blocks here. And in there, I'm going to uh, put a show. Okay, let's try that one more time and see if we have any more luck. There we go, we got five tiles across here. Now they're not hooked up to anything. So um, when I hit a letter of the alphabet, you can see that they all end up changing. So yeah, it's universal across all of them right now. So the trick is gonna be to get them to behave one at a time using that clone ID. I just wanted to show you a quick way to confirm that your clone IDs have been set up carefully. This is a great way to um, 
to express what any variable is worth inside of game if you're worried about whether you set up your variables properly. So right under when I started the clone here, I'm going to use a say variable to get my clones to say what their clone ID is or what their uh, square ID is. So in the spot where it says hello here, I'm going to put square ID. Then I'm going to click the green flag and you can see each one of them is talking now and saying their unique number. So we've got numbers one through five here and that is perfect. So we know that we've set this up properly. Let's go ahead and delete that. We won't need it in the future. I just wanted to show you a, a cool way to troubleshoot your projects here. Okay, so now that we have five squares on the screen and they're all accepting keyboard inputs, it seems pretty clear that we're gonna have to kind of rejig our program and correct a few things that we set up in our initial try at this. Uh, the big area of difficulty is this area here, when any key pressed. So right now, basically anytime I hit a keyboard key, it is affecting what's happening to these squares. Now that's not always going to be the case when we're playing the actual game. For example, um, when we when we put our fifth letter in and then we try and type a sixth letter, nothing should happen or we should get an error message or something different should happen. It shouldn't just keep switching letters. And of course we are gonna have to keep track of which letter in particular we're affecting here. So we're gonna have to get rid of this when any key pressed and we're gonna have to put this detect letter into some kind of a loop that will allow us to control when it's, we're detecting letters and when we're not. And then the switch costume is going to have to not be connected here because it's going to have to affect only a certain clone at a certain time. So we're going to have to find a way to get it under here with when I started the clone in order for it to function properly. Or otherwise, we're just going to keep con uh, changing all of these squares around, which of course we don't want. Let's start with the detect letter square. So uh, we're going to start a main game loop here. Right after we finish initializing the stuff and setting up our board, I'm going to set up a forever here. At some point, we're going to have to set up controls to stop uh, input from being detected every time we click, um, every time we type a letter. But for now, we're just going to run this inside a forever loop. And we're gonna, just going to get it to wait here. So we'll put it into a holding pattern here where we're waiting until there's some keyboard input. So I'm gonna grab this uh, key space entered and change it to any. So we're still waiting for any key to be pressed before we detect letter. And then at that point, um, we're gonna wanna feed that information into the, uh, into the proper clone. Now we already know which ID each of the individual's clones has, but we're gonna need another variable that is gonna be telling us which of these five clones is the one we're interested in in this moment. I've gone ahead and created a brand new variable here called current square. That's a global variable and it is going to keep track of which square it is that we're adding data to at any given time. We have to go ahead and initialize that at the beginning of the uh, code here. So let's go ahead and set current square to one. And basically every time we come around this loop, when we successfully put a letter into place here, we're going to want to change that variable by one so that we're looking at the first square and then the second one and then the th third one. So let's go change current square by one right after this uh, script finishes running. Okay, now the when I started the clone here, we do still want to switch costume to letter to add and that variable is still being changed. But inside here, we want it to run a check and see, am I the square that's being affected right now? Am I the current square? So we're only gonna let this code run if um, our current square is equal to the ID number of that square. So if our current square is one, we only want that to affect the square that has the ID one. All right, so let's grab an equal sign and we'll grab an if sign, and sorry, an if statement. And inside there is gonna be our switch costume to letter to add. So let's grab those variables now. So if our square ID is equal to the current square, 
then we're going to go ahead and change that cost cube around. Okay, let's uh, reinitialize this program here. Let's click the green flag. Now it's already entered a letter here, and that's an odd situation. We're going to uh, figure that out in just a second. Why is there still a letter here? Why didn't it blank out? Probably because one of my variables was not initialized properly. But in the meantime, while we're here, let's have a look and see whether our letter input is being accepted properly. And no, it's not. So obviously there's something wrong with our thinking. Another key to this is the fact that our current square number is going up by crazy. It's going up by several thousand every time that we click this button. So we've hit our first real snag in this program. I thought I had everything perfectly planned here, but it turns out that something in my evil scheme here has not come out properly. Mon monitoring variables like this and seeing how they're changing and whether they're changing the way you expect them to is really the key to debugging a program like this. So let's go have a deeper look into what's going on and what has been not coded properly in this program or perhaps there's something that I haven't coded yet. Two hours later. So of course there were some errors in my thinking here and sometimes you just gotta run the program to see why and start to kind of reverse engineer it. The answer always lies in looking at these variables and seeing whether they're changing the way that you want them to. So in this case, one thing that I noticed when I took a closer look at this program was that current square number that's going up like crazy, I can control how crazily it's going up by how long I hold down that keyboard key for. So if I hold down my letter A key and just don't let it go, you see that number just keeps rising or going around that loop constantly for the entire time that I'm pressing that button. So that's the re one of the real problems here that is bedeviling us. So uh, let's have a look at the code here. So what's happening is we're waiting until that key is pressed and then we're running around that loop for the entirety of the time that key is pressed. What we really want to do here is make it so that it only detects one key press and only enters this detect letter loop once. To do that, we're going to have to, at the end of this, after we've detected our letter, we need to run another script here that's detecting that I've now let go of the keyboard. So we need to start when I hit the keyboard, run once, and then not update things until I've let go of the keyboard. So to do that, we're gonna need to grab this wait until key per any key pressed. We're gonna have to modify it by adding a not. So this green block here that's called the not is basically the opposite of what we're what we're doing here so we're going to wait until i'm not pressing any keys on my keyboard at all anymore and as you can see let's have a let's blow this program up here again so right now my current square is one i'm going to hold down that letter a key now and you can see that it's jumped to two but the number isn't advancing it's waiting for me to let go of that keyboard before the script advances here uh, and let's try that again i'll hold down the b key and you can see that the script is advancing and, and that current square is going up, but we've got some other problems here. First of all, our letter's not updating. You can see the letter to add is in fact changing. If I click a C here, for example, that letter to add does change to C. It changes to D and E, etc. here. And so part of this is working, but there's still some issues. So I'm wondering if any of you out there in TV land noticed the rookie error that I made here that is one of the problems that we're encountering this program right now, which is when the clone is first created, it does check and see if its square square ID matches the current square, but then it just stops checking. Well, this is something we need to be constantly checking. We can't just check it when the clone is created. So that's gonna be solved by creating a forever loop here. But as you can see, that's not gonna cure all our ills. So when I click the green flag now, uh, first of all, we still have a letter here, which is a little bit strange. And watch what happens when I tr type in a new letter. That changes to A, but then a second or so later, the next letter updates with the same letter A. And then when I type a B here, it does change to B, but then the next letter updates to B. So there's something happening here with the timing that we still need to nail down here. So after a bunch of looking around at this problem, 
I finally came up with a solution here. And this is one of these conundrums that sometimes you just have to um, stop and assess by looking at the value of these variables. You can see that the letter to add is in fact updating itself. When I type a letter C here, for example, the letter to add is correct here. So that's not the problem with the code. It is setting the letter to add properly. But the issue is that when this variable change current square changes, the current square becomes the next square and it immediately, since it's going around this loop forever now, it immediately updates the next letter with what's with what you've typed on the keyboard the last time. So we need some kind of a way of getting this if statement to be a little more smart. It is operating at the right time, but once it flips over, it's continuously updating now. We only want it to update the once when right after we press that keyboard key. So the key to solving this problem lies in the realization that when we type a letter here, that second letter doesn't update itself right, right away. It's going back and running through this loop one more time. So if we can find a way to interrupt that process, we can probably make it so this letter doesn't update until the time comes. The key is going to be down here in this when I started the clone. We have one condition right now that lets us switch our costume on this letter. We want to add an extra condition here that basically says, yes, I'm allowed during this one moment to update this costume. But after that, I'm going to wait before I update my costume again. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an and statement here so that I can check for two things instead of checking for one thing. We'll put this first condition here on the left and I've created a variable here called update allowed and that variable is going to be either a zero or a one and as you can probably guess when it's a one that means we're allowed to change this and when it's a zero it's not going to be allowed to change so we're going to wait until update allowed is equal to one now we have to change this variable around somewhere. It has to be zero at one point and then change to one. The answer doesn't lie here. So we're gonna have to go back to this other code up here. This is where we're actually inputting the letter uh, feedback here. So we're gonna have to get this program once it sets letter to add, we're going to let it update this. We're gonna change that variable over to one then we're going to almost immediately switch that ability off so that before this loop can come around, it will disable the ability. So we're going to switch to the next letter, but it's not going to be allowed to update itself until the, until the next time we type a key on the keyboard. So that's a fairly simple fix in the end now that we understand how this works. We're just going to click on set. We're going to grab a set update allowed. And as soon as we're done, setting this variable we're going to let it update the costume then we're going to wait just an infinitesimal amount of time just enough time for the computer to click around to the next operation and uh, so we can do that with a wait command so let's go ahead and grab a wait we don't actually want to fit an amount of time into here we just want to say wait zero seconds now this is a scratch hack that um, a lot of inexperienced scratchers aren't unaware of. But we're, what we're basically doing here is pushing to the next frame or the, sorry, the next loop around this program. We're saying, don't do this now, do it, the, make it the next thing that you do. And so that's what wait zero seconds does here. And as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna go back and set our variable back to zero again. So set update allowed back to zero. And so before this program gets a chance to update the next letter with the letter that we just picked, it's gonna be frozen again because this variable is gonna be back at zero again. Let's test it out and see if that works properly. So I'm gonna type an A and you can see, well, first of all, we can see right away that my program isn't updating with that for with any kind of letter. Even though it says letter to add is A here, it's remembering that from the last time we ran this program, but it's not updating it because updates aren't allowed until I press my next letter. So let's try typing a B. There we go. And now that updates, but it's not jumping to the next letter. So it looks like we solved our problem here. 
and now we can just go ahead and type an entire word b e let's type what was the b e word belly b e l l y there we go and the next time we press a letter of course nothing's happening because we haven't taught our code what to do after we've completed five letters yet okay so uh, i think we've solved all our problems now and we're typing letters perfectly so after a couple of setbacks we've accomplished our coding goal for today we're entering letters into the keyboard and they're successively filling up each of the squares in the proper order and not updating when them when they're not supposed to. Our next goal here is gonna to be to set up a backspace key so that we can edit the existing letters and switch them back to blank status again when they're done. And then after that, we're gonna work on a way to add extra rows to this keyboard because as you, those of you who played Wordle will remember there are actually six possible tries you have to finish this puzzle. So after we finish entering the first word, we're gonna add successfully more rows over and over again until we get our puzzle right or until we fail. So we'll get on that next episode. If you have your own ideas about how to resolve these problems, go ahead and code it yourself and show me your file. Share it with me and send me the project ID number, the nine digit number inside your scratch file. I'll have a look at it for the next episode and maybe incorporate some of your code into my solution as I come up with it. In the meantime, happy scratching and good luck.